Let's find out from the man about SAP and a cloud trial. Hi, I'm Ian Thane. Welcome to another SAP Co Talk. And the man who am I talking about? But Tom Young. Tom, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. The man. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to talk about SAP HANA Cloud Trial. Um, let's just dive right into my questions. Uh, yeah. How does SAP HANA Cloud Trial differ from previous HANA Cloud based offerings that we've had in the past? Yeah, so we've had a couple offerings in the past. The uh, for developers to really try things out. And the first one would have been HANA Express. Mm -hmm. It was a great offering in that it gave you your own private HANA instance and very full featured, not watered down, very, very few restrictions. But of course, we just gave you the software to install somewhere. So it meant having to install it on a local desktop or, or, or laptop machine and of course, HANA being an in-memory database has pretty high hardware requirements, right? Uh, to get around that a little bit, there was also an offering of HANA Express directly on the hyperscalers. But again, that meant you having to install it yourself um, or, or, or get an offering, but then you're paying all the infrastructure costs to run it, even though the software is free. Then we did have, uh, we have had an offering for HANA as a service in the cloud, but it was very limited. Uh, you didn't get a full HANA instance. You got a single HDI container inside a shared instance that you were sharing with everybody else. So of course you didn't have administrative access or cockpit ask access or things like that. So it was very, very limited in what you could do. And what the new HANA cloud trial offers you is kind of the best of both worlds. Fully managed, uh, in the cloud, in the SAP cloud platform, SAP pays all the infrastructure cost. So there's no, there's no hidden cost. Uh, you know, when you put the system to sleep, you're not paying for, for disk storage or anything like that. SAP is paying for all of that. So it's truly a zero cost option uh, for developers to try out HANA. But at the same time, you're getting your own private instance uh, that you have full administrative access to. Uh, so yeah, really, really, like I said, the, the best of both worlds there. So if I, um, you know, if I'm a, I'm a developer, is that really why it's such an important offering? Yeah, I mean, it's important because it, it because it's not limited. <laughs> uh, so you, you can try out a very large range of things, mm -hmm. um, you know, so you're not going to go through one tutorial and then hit a wall and, and, and have to stop. You, you can go through a whole range of, of different tutorials, different aspects, uh, like I said, full administrative access. You want to mess around with, uh, you know, exporting containers and, uh, you know, doing your own security setup and, and really learn some advanced stuff. You can do it all here, which is great. But also there's no barrier to entry. I mean, you go in, you sign up for an SAP Cloud Platform trial, you, you click to create the HANA instance and you know, five minutes later, you've got your full HANA. Mm -hmm. uh, so no complicated uh, setup process, not having to know anything about uh, configuring it, no Linux knowledge needed. Uh, SAP will do the backup recovery, uh, updates to the system for you. Y you. You can just consume it and let SAP take care of it for you. And as you mentioned, you know, uh, tutorials um, uh, on the mm -hmm. developer center, I'm guessing we've got a wealth of tutorials ready there and waiting. Or at, yeah, least, we do. at least in the bag, you know, for, for development coming. <laughs> we, we do have some specific to HANA Cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have a few that we've rewritten or written new for, for HANA Cloud specifically. Um, those are mainly the ones on how to get started mm -hmm. uh, because it is a little different setup. But then once you get into it, there's a whole lot of tutorials that uh, work for for HANA Express, HANA on-premise, uh, HANA as a service, or HANA Cloud. Uh, for instance, all the SQL script tutorials, um, uh, Rich Hamlin recently tested them all on HANA Cloud to make sure that there, there were no little differences or, or anything like that. They all work perfectly fine. So there's a whole lot of just general HANA tutorials that work fine in, in HANA Cloud. Now there are, there are of course some that maybe, don't worry, you know, like the HANA, Ex the HANA Express XSA ones, uh, well, actually, a actually, different. Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what I was going to say. If you, if I'm a developer 
and I'm using HANA repository or XSA based development. Is there a upgrade? Do I need to reskill for, for this? What's the score? Yeah, it's not wildly different. I mean, XSA was always um, based upon Cloud Foundry. Uh, so uh, subset of the Cloud Foundry APIs and SAP's own implementation of those APIs for the on-premise world. But I think you find that the, conceptually they're, they're very similar environments, but it does mean, for instance, where when you're working on-premise or with HANA Express, you do a XS apps is, is a common command to get a list of apps. And when you go to the cloud platform, the command is CF apps. So the major difference is just switching from the XS command line command to the CF command line. But then the concept of build packs, apps, services, service brokers, it, it all works logically the same way. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you find that your skill sets translate very easily. Um, the security setup is a little is a little different but between the two, um, but your applications themselves, if you're creating multi-target applications, usually there's, there's absolutely no changes that have to be made to those at all. The same service broker names, same service broker plans. Um, you can pretty much pick up an, an XSA app and, and deploy it to the cloud platform and, and using HANA Cloud with probably no, no changes to uh, to the source code, maybe a few changes to the MTA YAML, and maybe only changes to the source code uh, in that there's a couple of older features that were deprecated that we got rid of moving to HANA Cloud. No, no HDB CDS, for instance, you have to add a new parameter uh, so to generate HDB table, HDB view, but these are all documented uh, things, pretty, pretty easy to find out, uh, well-known, uh, slight syntax differences. Uh, so like we converted the whole, the last open SAP course, all the, all the exercises we converted to HANA cloud. And there was just a couple of minor syntax differences that we hit like on day one and, and then everything else was smooth sailing. Okay. So uh, develop, development tools. Um, what about the experience for HANA cloud and, you know, in the near future, obviously we don't to talk too much into futures, but just in the near future. Yeah, we're really at a, we're at a crossroads there when it comes to developer tooling. So, and I know the web IDE might feel still new to a lot of people. Maybe they're still working in HANA Studio. They haven't moved to the web IDE. We're actually about to make another generational jump from the web IDE to the business application studio, which you might look at it on the surface and go, oh, it's just a different web-based browser, but uh, the differences are much deeper than that. So first of all, the uh, Business Application Studio, if you look at it and, and understand the technical infrastructure behind it, it is really a browser-based version of Microsoft VS Code. And therefore has very close compatibility and, and the same kind of developer experience that you have with VS Code. And that's important because what we're doing with a lot of the tooling you look at the CAP tooling, the UI5 Fiori tooling, the upcoming new uh, performance analyzer for HANA that, that has been shown recently in some early uh, uh, labs demos. They're actually VS Code extensions and they work in both the business application studio and they work in VS Code locally. So that's a major difference. You're gonna have this choice. Do I wanna develop locally on my local, uh, on my local machine and use VS Code to do that or do I not want to mess with installing anything on my local machine? Maybe it's very locked down. Maybe I don't want to have any, any sources locally. Then I can have a completely browser-based environment supplied by SAP in the business application studio. And not just an editor, but we actually supply a, a little Linux server behind the scenes, a cloud shell, where you can run uh, commands and, and execute your, your code in that cloud shell without having to deploy it either to Cloud Foundry or Kubernetes. So you, for doing local testing and development, you can get very quick turnaround times um, because you're, you're, you're just deploying it to that little local shell um, and, and you can immediately debug and, and immediately test. And we don't have the problem that we had with the Web IDE where we had to do a full deploy to Cloud Foundry in order to, to test or debug something. So we're gonna get a, we're going to get a, a, a different user experience in that it's very shell first, command line based. 
And that's not to say that there aren't menu options and graphical tools, but everything is kind of delivered shell first. And a lot of the stuff in the web IDE that you did that, you know, maybe you right mouse click and, and choose build and you didn't know what it was doing behind the scenes. It was really running a script and deploying this and that. Now you're going to see all that stuff and you're going to have access to it all and you can run it all manually. Um, which I think is great for, for developers to have that level of control, you know, reusability, ease of access when you need it, but the ability to dip down and know what's going on behind all those menu options and to be able to control it, override it, write your own build scripts or, or whatever. Um, so it's not, it's not the black box kind of experience that, that we had with the web IDE. Real developers ex experience, as you say, get your hands dirty, see what's happening yeah. in there. Cool. Yeah. Well, Tom, thank you so much for spending time with us. I'm sure this is going to bring a lot of questions our way. And I'm sure I'm going to grab you on another code talk in the future. But for now, thank you for joining me today. Sure. Anytime. Very enjoyable to, to talk on the subject. Looking forward to it. Mm -hmm.